Welcome, everybody. To once again, the manliest panel you're going to see all weekend. Ain't that right? Yeah. So, thank you all for coming. I know it's like bright and early on a Sunday. Most of you people stayed up really late last night watching Pony Stock, didn't you? Wasn't that awesome? Did Mike the Microphone rock it or what? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I love you too, Mike. So, to get started here, I'm going to bring in my very good friend, Dr. Andrew Francis. Give it up. Yes. Give it up. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Francis, how are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. You know, you know, have you seen Peter? I haven't seen Peter anywhere. Any of you guys seen Peter at all today? Where was he? Was he the elevator? He's by the elevator. You know, he was by the elevator. You know what? You look over there. I'm gonna look over here. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Peter, Pete, pumpkin eater. Uh, you passed out there. Just passed out underneath the table. Pony stock was awesome. Yeah. You you wait now, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's groggy, but man, where did you get a pillow down there? <laughs> I got a whole setup, man. Oh. <laughs> they got me a room. I'm now down, you know I'm where down. Peter's been staying. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, yeah, this, is, this, has to no be, this, this has to be the manliest panel here all weekend. It has to yeah! be. Yeah! And you know, you know what we need to do to start out being manly? Yep. Yep. We need cider. Cider. <coughs> yes. You got to put cups down like this, too. Yes, you must slam them like manly men. Can't be delicate. Mm -mm. No, no. Manly. Manly. <laughs> Be one careful, you, though. You can break these easy. And one for you. All right. Yes. We got to get started early today. Mm. Mm. Cheers, my gentlemen. Cheers. 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 Manly you? cheers. Manly yeah. Cheers. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, you are. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> Boy. You know, it was manlier last year, wasn't it? It was just a little bit like manlier last year. So we yeah. got to step it up. We got to step it up. Step it up. Stepping it up. Step making it, it up. manly. So, I think your sister needs a, a, a yeah, hairbrush. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> and you get. <laughs> Woo! No, no, that, no, no, wait, wait, wrong, wrong pony. You don't, you don't get cheerily. You get Fluttershy. I get, I get cheerily. Can, can I open it? Yes, yes, open them. Can open I, them. can I open it brush. in a manly way? Here's your brush. Okay. <laughs> <Come in. laughs> Yay. <laughs> you see, it, it's so much more manly. Yeah. Her tail. Mm, love you. Let's get, where's the brush? It's in there. It's in there. No. There you go, sis. <laughs> How is that, Twiley? <sighs> and, of, and of course, once again, Princess Celestial is my questions. So, let's go to my questions. Did you get flowers in yours? I, I did. Got, I, got a, I, got a, I got a little tea set. Uh, <gasps> and it's shining armor and key. Okay, I'll, I'll just, oh. I have a little tea set. Oh, little tea. Oh. Amazing. Amazing! Wow, lemon flavor. Do you need a refill? Peter, 
Last year, last year, oh, thank you very much. Do we have to answer questions? I just want to play with the ponies. Hey, Pete. Last year, we couldn't talk about this little cool mongoose that you play we now. We could not. We, we were not. forbidden from forbidden talking about, from talking forbidden. about Littlest Pet Shop. Yep. Um, tell me a bit about playing such a, a character with such a, a huge accent on him. Is he a little bit uh, tougher to play than a uh, regular I, normal character? I don't find him tough to play uh, particularly. I mean, it, it is... I mean, Big Macintosh has a little accent on him, too, for yep. me, right? I... Um, when I got Big Mac, they said, uh, okay, can you say yup? I said, yup. They said, can you say it like Ashley says it? <laughs> they went, oh my, yup. And they went, great. Okay, good. So basically, I just make my voice low and imitate Applejack. That's, you know, I guess that's what I'm saying. That's a secret. Don't tell. Um, but I said this at the other panel, too. With, uh, with Sunil, I, I had been, uh, in 2011, in the summer of 2011, I had the chance to go to Uganda to work uh, at Mira Nair's acting school called Mesha. Uh, uh, and I, or it was a film school, not an acting school, but I was the acting mentor and I got to cast the four short films that were being made by the uh, students. And, um, uh, and I was working with other mentors from other disciplines and other places. There were writers from New York and uh, an editor from New York and a writer from LA. And, a, uh, and then there, were, uh, there was a camera guy and a sound guy, both from uh, Bombay. Mm -hmm. And they had come to to work on uh, sound and camera. And uh, the sound guy, Balon, would always come up to me and say, Pete, uh, you have to remember the sound guy always comes last. <laughs> it's just a fact, Peter, on film sets. And then he would walk away, that was it. You know, uh, and so when they asked me to do Sunil and they wanted a slight Indian accent, I thought, well, Balon, you know, the sound guy always coming last. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know, he's a little bit of a sad sack. You know, Balon is not particularly, he's a, he's a great guy, but, you know, that, that sort of sad sack sentiment, I thought, was kind of perfect for Sunil, and I just kind of, I went with that, and they thought, yeah, okay, that sounds slight, I guess. <laughs> that's, mm -hmm. that's what they wanted. Slight, yeah. yeah. Um, that's cool. Andrew. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, seeing as Princess Cadence is the spiritual leader of the Crystal Empire. Right. right. Correct? Everybody? Spiritual, spiritual leader. leader. Everybody looks up to her. Sure. So uh, is Shining Armor like only... There she is. There she is That's right my there. baby. Yep. Ow! Do you see... That girl can take flight. Yes. Whew. Do you see Shining Armor as more of a figurehead prince, or you know, you're going to get in there with the, uh, the... Get into the teeth of Saddle mm. Arabia's, you know... I think Shining Armor is gritty. I think but you don't get to see a lot of that we, in the show. We don't. Yeah. We you see know, more but Shining gritty Armor. Gritty good being guy. He's, a, a he's guy. the Han Solo. Han Solo. Han Solo. Yeah. Frozen and Carbonite. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Two big hooves sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I, just I, in this for the money, Twiley. <laughs> <laughs> Shining Armor shot first. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> I got him already. I love it. <laughs> you got me. You cracked me. Uh, what, what Peter, was, huh? um, earlier this summer, yes. mostly all we saw you was painted blue. Yeah, I was pretty yeah, blue. Pretty blue. Everybody, everybody seen the, the alien abduction trailer? <laughs> yes. Tell Hi, us. people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell us a bit about that project. How's that going? Okay, uh, I'll have to fill everybody in. In, I think, maybe around March or so, um, a, a new film startup called Cinecu, so cinema like cine, and then, uh, and then coup like a government overthrow. Um, Cinecu started up, and their big thing was, okay, make us a movie trailer, and, uh, and then we're going to have a, basically a contest, and the winner of the contest is going to get a million dollars. And so 90 different groups of filmmakers from across Canada got together, and they all made trailers. Um, and because uh, we all wanted a million bucks. A million. And, um, and our movie, uh, after several different votes and v elimination processes, uh, our movie Alien Abduction made the top five. Bum, bum, bum. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and so in, uh, in the movie, I play the alien. 
Um, Patrick Gilmore, who some of you may know from Stargate Universe, uh, plays Dave Duberinsky. And the plot of the movie is that um, uh, I've been abducting him since he was a baby uh, because my race would like to take over the Earth from humans. Uh, and if he turns out to be a person with worth by the time he's 30, we'll leave you guys alone. But he's a loser. <laughs> of course, he thinks he's getting abducted by aliens, so he abducts me. Hence, alien abduction. Um, oh, boom. Kaboom. Whoa! I get it! So he ties me to a chair with a bunch of Christmas lights and starts interrogating me and everything. Um, like any alien would. Yeah. Like you would, <laughs> yeah. if you're a loser. Yeah, loser, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, but I was blue. I was painted blue, and I, was, I had a, a head-to-toe blue, an awesome, like, full bodysuit made for me by these awesome costume designers called Enigma Arcana. Uh, and so we're the top five, and that means that the producers and the director have to fly to Banff, Alberta, where every year there's a, a huge... Um, media festival where many pitches are made, Hollywood insiders are all there, it's a huge deal. They got to go to uh, Banff to pitch with the other four teams that got into the top five. They all pitched for the one million bucks. And uh, the winner was Wolf Cop. <laughs> Set in Alberta, Canada, maybe. Set, they're actually, I think they're from Saskatoon. No, Saskatoon. Sask Saskatchewan. But, uh, beat up by Wolf Cop again. Beat up again. by Wolf Cop, but you know. <laughs> again! We're ah, wolf, wolf, wolf Cop! Wolf Cop again! But you wolf know Cop! What? If you're going to make a movie for a million bucks. Make sure it's about wolves. I think you're going to make Wolf <laughs> yeah. Cop, ultimately. Because wolves Wolf Cop cops, is. Duh. Here's the deal Wolf Cop is a movie about a cop who's a werewolf. Oh, you don't say. Yeah. You don't say. I didn't get. I didn't and get. Their, and their tagline is this their tagline is Dirty Harry, only hairier. <laughs> I can see right. why they won. <laughs> no, you know what? Let's just reboot Chips as right. werewolves. Right. right. So let's have, yeah, let's have Ponch and John as werewolves. Yeah, Chips and werewolves. Let's do Saskatoon. I think that's kind of, kind of it, actually. Yeah. I think you just... Nailed it. Nailed Give me it. a million bucks right now. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't win me. it. So Darn! I didn't win. Um, but I think, you know, having not won, we have decided to pursue the film anyway, and I think we have... Uh, I can't talk in too much detail <gasps> about it, but the last time I was asked this question at a panel, I, could, I had no idea what was going on, but I know now that we are pursuing a slightly bigger deal that is looking quite promising. So. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> keep, your, keep your eye out for that. Andrew! Andrew! Um, you are, like, really working it up there in Vancouver. Oh, yeah. I'm working oh, yeah. it, baby. Steel, Slug Terra. Yeah, I auditioned for that. Yes. I auditioned for yes. that. Yes, yes, yes. Tell us yes. a bit, yeah, tell us a bit about what's coming up. Coming what, up. What so, you can uh, talk about. we're on season two right now, Max Steel. Um, and I get, to play, I get to play Max, and I get to play a bunch of awesome bad guys. So awesome. I get to play uh, a guy named Toxon, who, um, you know, he says, like, absolutely. What do you think, fishy? And he talks to this little inanimate fish who goes, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> and then there's a, there's a bad guy, there's Fire Elementor, who's, you don't know what I know. I'm fiery and mean. And then there's Air, who's very airy. I say everything with lots of air. <laughs> And a bunch of crazy guys, so that's a really fun show. And uh, Slug Terra is another one for Disney XD that's about uh, Eli Shane going underground. And it's Did you get nominated for an Emmy for that? Uh, for a Leo for that one. I thought it was an Emmy that you got nominated for. No, that was Lee. Oh, that was Lee Mr. Tilkar. Lee got nominated for the Emmy. And he oh. won the Leo as well. I mean, he's, yeah. he's pronto. He does an amazing, amazing, amazing job. Yeah. Um, but it's a really cool show, really cool animation. It's, it's kind of like a Pokemon theme where Eli Shane goes underground into this place called Slug Terra, and he collects and saves slugs and then use them as ammunition, ammunition out of his slug slinger to battle Dr. Black and save them from being ghouled. Sorry, was that too much? <laughs> but it's really cool, and so that's a fun one. And of course, Johnny Test. Uh, oh, I did th for that. There might, be some <laughs> there might be some new ones of those coming out soon, too. Yes. There'll be a, a continuing theme about the things he auditioned for and the things he got. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, just keep petting that pony. Yeah. <laughs> just keep petting that pony. Uh, just hey, combing the tail out. Hey, Pete. <laughs> Pete, uh, you're known as a bit of a coffee 
A what? A, a bit of a coffee drinker. A coffee drinker. Just a bit of I, coffee That's drinker. not what I thought you said, no. and I was surprised that you <laughs> said what I thought you said. Yeah, I, I didn't say that. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. Coffee drinker. So, yeah, I do drink coffee. Give us, give us uh, if Big Mac walked into his lo- local Luna Bucks in Ponyville, uh-huh. what would he order? Coffee. <laughs> just, just coffee. Yep. That's it. He likes his coffee black. Yep. <laughs> okay. That, Be that, easy ordering. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. In your usual tin cup, Big Mac? Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, the one's ground one too, the too easy. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, how about Andrew? You're an outdoorsy kind of guy. Yeah. You know, you're surfing in Australia. You're riding your skateboard. I see, yeah. we see vines of you up in an airplane. For <laughs> yep. Surfing um, on an airplane. Yes, yeah, yeah, surfing so, the airplane. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Having that kind of background, what kind of outdoorsy sports do you think Shining Armor would be into? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. Javelin ice, tossing, maybe? Ice surfing. Do you say jab- yeah, javelin? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I think yeah, I think is, I did see a is javelin. Wife tossing a sport. I think I did see a javelin pit in that scene uh, in uh, Crystal Empire. Did you guys see the <laughs> javelin was. pit? I think it was yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. I know he'd be. I think he'd be like a track and field type guy. You know. Well, I mean, we were talking about yesterday. I think it was in the panel. Like, you know, he seems like he'd be a football player, and Cadence would be the cheerleader. You know what I mean? Back uh-huh. in the day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the nice ones. And uh, yeah, I think he. You know. You know what I'm saying. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I think he'd, he'd be a track and field guy all the way. Cool, track yeah. and field. So there's lots to do in track and field. So discus yeah. Or ja- javelin jump throwing. Or... I thought we already went over this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep going. I love putting him on the spot. Mm, love it. Okay, let's see. You're both, you know, you're both into this whole vine thing. You know, you yeah. get out your little iPad, you're doing your vines. What would you do together? Let's make a vine right now. Make a vine right now. And so come find us on Vine. Make a vine. What am I? I'm Andrew Francis, and you're under Peter New. I'm Peter New. I I did it through my Twitter. Drew Francis 604. Come follow. I did it. Yeah, I did it through my Twitter too. So I'm I'm at actor Peter New on Twitter. Uh, But let's make a. You have your phone here. Yeah. We're gonna make a vine right now. Um, because this is what has been introduced as an idea in my brain. We're vining. We're vining. I know this is the most interesting thing. He's got hilarious vines, by the way. Check them out. They're really. Yours are okay, too. <laughs> We're going to make a... I don't know what they have to be in it, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, duh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to so, be in it. Yeah. So hang on. Look at Moose. Tell, there he is. <laughs> tell us where we are. We're here at Everfree Northwest. Okay. I'm gonna go one, two, three, like that. When I go like that, I want all of you go to go at about this pace. Ever free Northwest! Like that, okay? Yes. Ready, set. Ever free Northwest! Oh, I totally didn't, I didn't do that right. <laughs> okay. Did it work? Totally didn't do it right. What? Screwed it up. Oh, all right, Pete. Now, now it's my That's turn. <laughs> Oh, no, he's taking it to the I'm going to do it again. Tell us where we are. We're at Everfree Northwest. Okay, now woo. <laughs> what? I'll switch that back. Now switch it back there. Okay, ready, set, Everfree Northwest. Now, ready? One. Everfree Northwest! <laughs> Uh, yes. Perfect. That'll be better. You'll That'll see that in about two seconds. All right, here's going to be mine. You say ever free. Ready? Hey, One. Just a second. i got to do this. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. This is, this is what, you know. What should I say about it? Let me see. I'm going to say it. Ever free. No. Ready for it? No, wait, 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 wait for it. One, two, three. Northwest. Ever free. Ever free. One, two, one, two, three. Northwest. Now say, huh? One, two, three. Uh. <laughs> Perfect, guys. Round of awesome. Thank you, Doc. All 
right, just gotta find a look here. Here. Time. Look for yourself. So how you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Yeah. How you liking your pony? Oh, I like her. Really. You're liking her? I like mine. Yeah, it's my CS. Hey, sis. Yeah. Hi, sis. I'm done. Okay. Are you guys right. done? Are you, sorry. No, not yet. Okay. This is what you get for saying I, you guys I, like yeah. to vine. I know. I know. Yeah, sorry, you got us all hooked on our vine. I didn't say make a vine. A what, thousand what, what, what people would you do in together. The room? <laughs> well, obviously, we, you, you know, we're doers. Don't find yourself. You're, you're doers instead of, yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Man, right, what, do you get, what do you got, Dustin? Can't just say, you gotta do. Season two, Littlest Pet Shop. Season right? two, Littlest Pet Shop, coming up. That is coming up, yes. Yeah. Announced. <laughs> Will happen. Awesome. I'm very happy. I'm very excited. I think, um, I think that show gets better and better as it goes. I hope more and more of you decide to tune in. Thank you. Yep. Thanks to those who have already. I auditioned for that. Yeah. <laughs> yes! I got one! <laughs> <laughs> If, <laughs> if both of you were to pitch a show, oh, to pitch a show, not a Vine show, a pitch, a real show, a real show, with both of you starring, uh huh, what would it be about? It'd be that. Remember that. Remember that audition. Remember that audition you were gonna have at my house. Oh, that's right. I forgot all about and it. And I slept right through. That's right. <laughs> Andrew asked me to come to his house to audition for a show that he had in his head, and I went all the way to his house, and he was still sleeping. And then I had to go. <laughs> and then I, I woke had... up right after, like, Peter. <laughs> I'm glad I was the first thing on your mind when you were awake. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, oh. Have more cider? That's right, trick up. <laughs> so the show that we would do together would be about... Um, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. I think I, I would love to do a show where we were paramedics. Somebody just shouted paramedic. I think that would be hilarious. I think it would be, Like we really were, bad really paramedics? Really bad, bad paramedics, paramedics. Yeah. So what do we do? I don't know. Get me an IV. I can't get you an IV. I'm drinking my coffee. <laughs> I don't, cop. I don't start until 12.38. <laughs> yeah. The man's dying! That's not my, my problem. <laughs> God, they shouldn't have sent me with you on this run. <laughs> You're still mad that you did a, that he slept through your audition. <laughs> are, we talk, are we still pretending to be bad paramedics? Oh, we were, we were, we were, we were. I'm not mad, I, just, I still just hope there's a chance that I can. It was like a month ago now, though, so I don't know. <laughs> It's still, it's still good. Okay, all right, we'll do it then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's mad. Uh, with all the great fan just, works that just people have been making part for you, now, for the inconvenience. <laughs> sorry, Dusty. No, no worries. You know, I'm only over here. But <laughs> with, with all the great fan works that these people have been making for you two, yeah. is there something, anything out there that hasn't been done yet that you guys are looking at for? Because it will happen as soon as you say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Something. <clears throat> Something that hasn't been done yet. Um, oh boy, I, every every I I keep thinking everything has been done, and then they they the fans, you guys, keep surprising me, and that is the a brilliant thing. Mm -hmm. um, what can I think like of? A shining armor wife launcher. <laughs> yeah, okay. you, you know what? There's a bunch. Of, there's a there bunch of is. different. There it is. <laughs> Woo! There's a bunch of different Nerf guns out there. I'm sure somebody can modify That's one. That's right. You just get it up. Boom! Ready, Cadence? Uh, you know what I would like to see is a Big Mac Magic 8 Ball. Ooh! Yes! It'd be red, it'd be a number seven, and all it would say is yep and nope. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that's it? Yeah. You'd have that to ask yes funny. and no questions. You'd have to ask it yes and no questions. Should I go to the supermarket now? Yep. <laughs> You can. Was that? <laughs> Check eBay in six hours. All right. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, it should definitely be apple shaped. It should definitely be apple shaped. And I think maybe it's, there might be maybe should be a third option where his cutie mark just comes up, and yeah. that means then it's like mystic. Mystic. Yeah. You'll have to make your own let, mind up let about the that. Apple tell that's, for, you. that's for when he answers silently. But deadly. Magic seven apple. The apple tells me we're going to question and answer after the next question. So, Ooh. 
You will quietly and in order line up over there. Now. Kids first, please. Kids, kids first. first. The manliest moderator in the world. The manliest moderator, moderator in, in the, the world. world. Nightmare Snowflake. Nightmare Snowflake. Nightmare Snowflake. <laughs> we'll be our moderator today. Thank you. So, after this next question, we'll get the question and answer. So, be, next, be nice to the people. Next question. Next question. Andrew. Andrew. Yo. Now that your sister's a princess. Yeah. yeah. And your wife is a princess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your mother-in-law is Twilight Sparkle's mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your aunt is a princess. Yeah. yeah. And Big Mac are you, is a Are you finding it that you need more nope. time away from the castle for guy time? Say again? Do you need more time away from the castle for guy time? Getting away from all those You princesses. always need more time away from the castle for, gar for, for guy time. Uh, that, are you true. kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, There's uh, a lot of princesses around. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, no, you he, and Big he Mac needs Mac time away. There. You and Big Mac. Although he spends a lot of time away, though. Yeah. He does he get does. a lot of time. He, he works does. hard. A, I think he's got a secret cult cave, yeah. right? <laughs> You know, yeah. like man cave, like a man. Oh, man. Okay, gotcha. I don't know. I was trying to watching, was, watching the Wonder Bowl. I didn't mean it to go that way at all. <laughs> no, but yeah. Yeah. Watching the hoofball championship. Yeah, yeah, the hoofball championship. championship. Exactly. He's got a pool table in there. No, it's no. He dog. needs to spend more time, I think, with his sister. So we see more of Shining Armor, I think. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's a way too far away, yes? He's way too far away. We need more Shining Armor. He's around more. Gosh. Yeah. yeah. With that. Yeah. With that. I want to know what you want to know. Um, if right. you could rename your character anything, what would it be? You could rename Surfer McDude Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would... Binary Apple Harvest. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Peter, what yeah. is the funniest yup you can make? The funniest yup I can make? I think it's like. <laughs> female shining armor. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? When I think shining armor? As a female. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? What's the first thing that comes to your mind if shining armor was female? If, if he was female? Turn, turn to female. female. Oh, he was female. Oh, uh... Sexy. <laughs> Sexy, yeah. Have either, of, have either of you converted anyone to loving My Little Pony? Yeah, I think so. I have one, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine's daughter, she found, uh, she found some stuff about uh, my, my part in Shining Armor and My Little Pony when she was in New York, and she said literally she spent the like, next six hours searching every single thing about it and watching the show. So she I, was locked in. I have a... Yes. I have a teller, uh, a teller at my bank who found out that I was on the show, and you know, a nice young guy. He was like, "Ha! So you're on My Little Pony? Ha ha!" And over the weeks, it was just like, "Yeah, I guess." Uh, so, you, so is the show good? Is it, is it a good show? And, you know, and then just like he kept showing a little bit more and more and more curiosity, and eventually I was like, "Dude, watch the show. Stop asking me." And he finally watched it. So yeah, he's in. <laughs> Um, I was wondering, I've heard stories of casting directors who won't cast anybody if they have less than like 20,000 Twitter followers or something like that. So I was just wondering if that has ever happened to you. It's absolutely true. And I only have 7,000. So all of you need to get out there and get me up to 20 so I can yeah, have yeah. more jobs. It's not true. Yep. And I'm less than that. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I've started to hear those stories too, but I, it hasn't affected me at all. No, no, I, never, I think in sort of in the Vancouver voice game, it wouldn't affect as much as maybe like sort of an L.A. thing. Um, but in yeah. Vancouver, no, it's a lot. It's, I mean, the guys who do the parts have done a lot of roles before, but I don't think Twitter necessarily comes into play. Yet. Okay, uh, so your social media is mostly for fun, not for your careers? Just to keep up with all you guys yeah, and chat, right? Yeah, Cool. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Awesome, thanks, dude. 
Mine's not so much a question as much as an annotation. On the earlier topic of Shining Armor as captain of a hoofball team, there's actually a very well done draw blog on Tumblr called Ask High School Cadence, where Shining Armor is captain of the hoofball team, and Princess Cadence is sort of the geeky, shy type of student. Ah. Oh, that's cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that makes more of a dynamo. I'd like her better as that than some, I was going to say bimbo, but oh, wait, I already did. <laughs> I take it back. Never mind. Cheerleader. No, that's great. I like that. I like that better. Thanks, dude. Um, if you two had to switch voices, like for char like voice characters, like like you would be uh, Big Mac and the other guy would be uh, uh, Shining Armor, what would the voices sound like? <laughs> I don't like this because <laughs> why not? You know, Shining Armor. Oh, Princess Twily. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's, that's right. Mm, nope. <laughs> that's what he sounds like. I, that's how I do it. <laughs> oh. well, then you'd get the job and I wouldn't. Uh, nope. <laughs> da, da, yup. <laughs> nope. Yup. All right, all right. I did it. <laughs> hey, where are you? So we know you guys get along with uh, like the show and all that now, but when you first started out and applied for the roles, did you think like, oh, this is gonna be another stupid little girl show or anything like that? Or did you actually like look at the script and go, wow, this is actually gonna be good? Or like, what was your initial reactions to it? I had, when, I, when I first saw it, like it would always come in. I didn't actually really put together at first that it was My Little Pony, because whenever we, we get it, I see it as MLP, right? Yeah. And so I'm actually not used to thinking of the brand when I, see, when I saw the audition. I saw MLP episode this and audition. And so it was kind of a little bit distant until we actually got the, until I got the role, got in there and recorded it and got to hear the voices and everybody doing it. Um, so like at first, yeah, I really wasn't sure what to think. I had no idea that it would have any sort of fandom at all. And uh, I even let it slip early that I played Shining Armor and then got a call from the higher-ups like, Take it down. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, Too I definitely late. didn't know at first. But then, uh, yeah, I, I found out pretty quick. I, um, I auditioned for season one, episode four. That's when I came into the audition. So they were already recording, and um, I just showed up for this audition for this character who said very little, and they said, he'll probably recur, which I don't know about you, but I, I've had so many auditions in my life where they go, he'll probably recur, and then I never get another phone call. So I just went, nah, another one off. <laughs> and then this happened. Awesome. <laughs> so. Uh, just a minute. Sorry, I wasn't feeling fabulous enough. I'm fabulous. Peter, Peter, I have a quick question for you. Yesterday sure. on the voice actor panel, you did a thing as Hasey Turnip Truck. Like you said something he oh, said. Oh, that Hasey Turnip Truck? I called him Nebraska Ned, I think, by mistake. Okay. Uh, did you say Trevor Duvall voiced him? The, uh, there was a guy uh, that Trevor Duvall voiced with that kind of voice. Okay. There was Hasey Turnip Truck in Nebraska. Well, I thought it was or... Matt Hill, but uh, I'm going to. There's one guy that Trevor did. He did like this. I just remember his face. All right. I was just curious. Thank you. Yeah. No, but I don't remember what. It was the same episode, I guess, that, that uh, Jet Set was in. So yes. yeah. I, whatever. The... Upper crust. Yeah. Yeah. Neil. Hello. Hello. Um, this one's for Andrew. Uh, my girlfriend absolutely adores you. She's out in the crowd right now, and I was wondering if you could give her a really big Sorry, hug. my name is Peter. Sorry. <laughs> She thinks you're fine too, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but I was wondering if you could give her like a big hug. Yeah, sure. Where are you at? All right, get up here. Let's do it.
Yeah, I had a question for Peter. Hi. Um, so, do you think Princess Big Mac would be controlling or gentle to her citizens? Gentle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I think that's so awesome. I. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna have a princess. Now they must later duel. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, he would definitely be gentle. I think he'd be a very even, level-headed princess. Yeah, I was also wondering if you could try to come up with a voice for Princess. Big it would Mac. be exactly this. It would be, yup. <laughs> Thanks. It would be awesome. no different. <laughs> Hello. All right, this is a question for the both of you fine gentlemen. Um, if, your if either Big Mac or Shining Armor were to suddenly go AWOL and become the most evil creatures in the universe, what do you, what do you think they would sound like in- Twily! <laughs> <laughs> That's right! I was going to ask what would be the first thing they'd do as well, but, yeah. okay. Uh, Say Twily! <laughs> That's right! Honestly, I think Big Mac would be more insidious than that. I think it would be just a question of he would say nope instead of yup. <laughs> and yup instead of nope. Think about and that. Just cause people to do the wrong things. And things would start to fall apart slowly, and he would sit there and chuckle. <laughs> I'm just right. a simple farm horse, <laughs> bucking apples. <laughs> All right, thank you gentlemen so much. Awesome, dude. With, with or without the white cat on your lap? With your... <laughs> the white cat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, my question is for the both of you, and that would be if Shining Armor and Big Mac were to get their own spin-off show, then what would they be about? Farming. Oh, <laughs> 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 God. If, if it's a, is it one show together that the two of us uh, have, or is it, it two shows? It can be together. It could be separate. I'd like to see us like a, as a duo. As a or duo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we should be cops. Yeah, cops. I know, yeah. totally. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should be motorcycle cops. Yeah, motorcycle. yeah. our hooves. You'd be, you'd be like, I'd ride the motorcycle, you'd be in the sidecar. I'd car. be in the sidecar. Why do I have to be in the sidecar? <laughs> sidecar. <laughs> Well, I'd have the main sort Big of blowing Max in the back. Yeah, Big I think Max we're in the sidecar with a little push button woo woo. Wee -woo, wee -woo. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're freeway police. <laughs> we're freeway, freeway police, yeah. yeah. That's totally what we do. Ro or roomies, yeah. Or like yeah, roomies, horrible yes. roommates. Totally. It's like, uh, it's basically, it's going to be a reboot of, um, of uh, what was that, like... <laughs> the Odd Couple. The odd, no, yeah, yeah. no? Kind of like The Odd, like the odd yeah. Couple, but... I'm just picturing being like, ah, oh, Big Mac, did you, did you clean the dishes? Yup. Wait, wait, wait. Did you actually? Nope. <laughs> Big Mac! Yeah. Big Mac and Josh! Big Mac and Josh! <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, it's Hogan's Heroes, actually. That's what we should do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great question, man. Thanks. Hello. 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 My question is, if the main six were to become um, boys suddenly, which main six pony would you want to voice and why? Not which pony do you think you would be cast as, which pony do you want to voice? Twilight. And why? Make sure you why? And, and why? Took the words out of my mouth, bro. She's the lead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> she gets, so she Andrew, gets all, that, all the I think, or I get like to be a in every episode. So Andrew will probably get the roles then. As long as he's not casting it and then owes me because he doesn't show up to the audition, then yeah, he'd get it. I'm never going to live it down. Nope. <laughs> and, what, and what about you, Andrew? Me? Uh, you know, you took the words out of my mouth, I think I would have said, but you know, I wouldn't mind playing a Pinkie Pie as well. <laughs> I mean, you get to go, you get to go crazy! So I would love to do that, yeah, yeah. 
Wunderbar. 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 Thank you. Ich freue mich, Sie kennenzulernen. Um, I'm wondering, if Twiley started dating Big Mac, how would Shining Armor react to that? Twiley! <laughs> well, if you, were, if you treated her well. Yep. <laughs> Some way don't believe that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't treat her right. No way, no how. <laughs> of course he would treat her right. I think Shining Arm would have something to say about that, for he sure. He'd lay the right. smack down as he can. Yep. Oh, and apparently, because we've already seen the epic rap battle, I would win. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> if Big Macintosh and Shining Armor would have a contest of some sort, Johnny Armour would win. Okay, Epic rap next. battle. Big Mac <laughs> next question. Would win. So, yeah, yeah. What would what would the contest be about, and who do you think would win? I think I think what it was about has a big. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think that would be how they would resolve uh, the conflict. Why are you throwing contest corny? I think, I think it would be a territorial contest? issue. I think it would be Shining Armor trying to expand his territory to get into more episodes of the show. <laughs> uh, and Big Mac, uh, you know, and then he'd naturally be trying to take over Sweet Apple Acres in order to be around yeah. more. And then Big Mac would be all, nope. And then, of and then course, my because, army would be like, Because yep. the ponies want. <laughs> and then Big Mac would be all like, nope. And then, and then I'd be like, yep. And then we'd have a rap battle, corn dog eating, wife throwing contest. Two out of three, I win. And I would win two out of three. Two out of three. Two and then, out of three. And then all the ponies would hate you because you wouldn't know how to make cider. And then you'd get, you'd get ousted. And That is true, actually. Yeah. I'll concede to that. Right? Yeah. So yeah. You, had to, you would have to throw we'd it. We'd make a truce. I think we'd make a truce. Yeah, we'd make a truce where you go back to the Crystal Empire and I have my farm back and then we just go back to normal. So you win. Yeah. <laughs> all right, fine. Great truce. Question for the both of you. Um, in a show where the female characters get most of the spotlight and most of the character development, is there some sort of an internal fact about each of your characters that you would love to see that you kind of know about it from having connected with the character in, in, in your uh, it's a, it's, process? It's how smart Big Mac is. I think he's actually really smart. Yep. Um, yeah, totally. And I think, uh, I think a lot of... A lot of Sometimes people mistake his silence for uh, an absence of intelligence, but I really don't think that's the case with him. I think he's really considered every single yuppie ever says. Yeah, somebody's doing a fancy mathematics on that farm mm -hmm. and it ain't Applejack. I think he's already done the fancy mathematics. That's the thing, right? He's already done it. He knows, he knows how it turns out. I, th I just like to see more of the backstory of Shining Armor. I just sort of like to see sort of more backstory to him and Cadence and just sort of where he came from, how he learned his ways. You know, maybe more stuff with him and Twiley as, uh, as when they were kids and him taking care of her and stuff. I mean, they touched on it, but it'd just be nice to see an episode where they expanded that and you really got to see the backstory and all that stuff. And just from voicing him, just knowing how genuine of a character he is, I think it'd be really cool to see him in that light and just see him when he really sort of like got to know his sister when she became a person and, and for the first time. Huh? Heck yeah. Who agrees? Yeah. Yes. Who disagrees? Yeah. All right. Good, good, good. Silver that, was, that was good. Don't that do that. that. The that I'll that give you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Thank you. All right. So, a uh, question for both of you. What's your favorite voice acting job outside of My Little Pony and why? Brief. brief for me, why. it's Sunil because it's really the only one I have. <laughs> no, it's not. That's not true. Not that's not true. true. Uh, it is Sunil, though, because it, it's so opposite to Big Mac and so much fun to do. Plus, being on a show uh, like Pet Shop, where I'm in every episode, I get much, uh, much more frequent opportunities to play a lot of the support characters. And so I get to stretch my muscle a lot more, <laughs> a lot more fun. Yeah, I'd say Max Steel would definitely be the most fun, just because I play such a sort of slew of characters that there's big sort of portions where you get to talk to yourself, and I think as a voice actor, that's when you sort of reach the sort of a pinnacle the in a show. Yeah, it's the best, <laughs> is that you're popping back and forth between two, three, four characters, and they're all talking to each other, and they have different characters and different ways that they speak, and I think that's just, a, it's a blast doing that. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, worried 
the voice of Applejack when uh, she turned into a stallion inside when Trixie returned. I'm sorry, I can't understand. But when, when Twilight uh, Sparkle did the magic jewel, did uh, she turn? Uh, were you the voice of Applejack when she turned into a stallion? No, I don't think so. Oh. No. Okay. Sorry. No. <laughs> Was it me? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What? What? It, it was still Big Mac. It was Big Mac. It was Big Mac. It was Big Mac painted as Applejack. Okay. Just one at a time. One person tell me. Big Mac went up and said something. And... Oh. Okay. Somehow. It... Really. So like usual. <laughs> oh. Then, uh, then I guess it was me. I apologize. I was wrong. I guess it was. And I just don't, I don't know this moment somehow. I've seen, I thought I'd seen them all, but I guess I haven't seen that one. I don't, that's not familiar at all. What season is that in? Three. That explains it. I haven't seen it. I got a two-parter here for Peter New and then one for Shiny Nar... Or sh yeah, Shiny Nar... Shiny Nar Francis. So anyway, Peter New, what is the what is the most embarrassing moment in your entire career as a voice actor? And then for print for shining Why do armor. I get that <laughs> then for shining armor, I would like to ask, what would you do against the most brutal line ever beheld to the ears of man? <laughs> Honey, does this dress make my butt look big? Cadence, if Cadence asks you that. I would tell her that her butt looked amazing. You know how to deal with women. Never say that it ever looks bad. <laughs> yes, honey, it looks great. We have to go. We're 15 minutes late. Seriously. <laughs> uh, the most embarrassing moment I've ever had as a voice actor. Uh, hmm. now, honestly, there Peter, having... Peter, before you start, yeah. can you make this answer like super long? Because <laughs> I, I got to go pee. Gone. I can play the Here's champagne panel. theme while we're at it. Minute. And, 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 I'll take a turn after. Uh, all right, then. The most embarrassing moment I ever had as a voice actor was when I had to imitate Andrew Francis. <laughs> no, I never actually did have to imitate Andrew. They always get him to do it. Um, I don't, I don't really know that there have been any particularly embarrassing moments, you know. I mean, there are little embarrassing things, like every now and then, you know, sometimes you're going around the room getting levels for characters, and, and because sometimes they'll throw characters at you right at the beginning of the session, you will think, or I have thought, that they're trying to get levels for two different characters from me, when in fact they want one from me and one from someone else, and so I'll start talking at the same time as somebody else. And that's a little bit embarrassing, because you think, oh yeah, right, I'm not the center of the universe. <laughs> Um, uh, but then beyond that, it's, you know, like stepping on your headphone cord, but everybody does that. And, uh, you know, you stand up like this sometimes because you forget you're wearing headphones and so you've got the cans on you and you stand up and go, ow, oh, <laughs> because your cord goes taut and you pulls on your head. Um, so that's that. That's my whole answer. Could I add to that question? Sure. Uh, during the recording of Hearts and Hooves Day, were you in the room with Nicole Oliver? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. How awkward was that? Was that? How awkward was that? You're it wasn't awkward, awkward at all. It was fun. <laughs> uh, it was super fun. I mean, it, um, we, uh, we goofed off a lot. Uh, my most embarrassing moment as a voice actor cannot compete yeah. with what just happened here. <laughs> uh, and that just happened. Anyway, it wasn't awkward at all. It was super fun to do. And we, I mean, we cracked up a lot. She was r right opposite me in the room, too, right? Which uh, is not nearly as far away as the back of this room. But um, so we had to deliberately not make eye contact because if we did, we would lose it. And that would... Uh... <laughs> it's all right? Shmoopy doopy pony pie. <laughs> All right, um, this is a question for both the voice actors. Um, for your very first position in your career as a voice actor, how exactly did you first obtain that position? Like, what did you have to go through for it? 
Well, I started, I, I was doing like acting or doing commercials and stuff when I was mm. six years old. And then uh, I got braces when I was nine. And so I couldn't really do like cereal commercials anymore. Like, you know, with all the cereals <laughs> caught in the braces. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so we sort of had to find another avenue for me to be a performer. And so we went to Ocean Studios, which is a studio in, uh, in Vancouver. And it was for a show called Sammy the Squirrel was the audition. And it was for the role of Sammy. It was a claymation. And, um, and I went in there and sort of had a really good first audition, and then that kind of broke me into this ocean. They were doing a lot of ADR at the time. And so, um, yeah, there weren't a lot of kids that could do it, and so I thank my lucky stars that I got, my mom got me braces, even though I hated them. <laughs> but it, it made for good times later. Uh, I don't remember exactly how it came out. As far as I know, it was just an audition, and, and I got it. It was for um, a video game called Need for Speed, uh, Hot Pursuit. <laughs> Um, I played, uh, I played a, a, a load of police. Just uh, anytime if you're driving in that game and then the cops are like, uh, uh, hey, uh, there's a car speeding by the Twin Tower Bridge. 67 to 90, 97 dispatch. That's me. That was you? Yeah. <laughs> You've been my fan all these years. I had no idea. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, this question is for all three of you, actually. Whoa. Dusty. Trifecta. <laughs> if you could reboot any children's show from your childhood, what would it be, and what role would you want yourself to be cast in? Oh, oh you guys have been talking, so I'm first. Huh? <laughs> You're up, baby. Okay. Um, from my childhood, okay, I'm 45, guys. You might not even know this show. But if anybody grew up with Battle of the Planets... Okay, some of, some of us old people remember this show. This was actually dubbed from a show in Japan called Science Ninja Team Gatchaman, which had like a 200 episodes in Japan. And there was a character on that show named Jason. I don't, that's not his Japanese name. But Jason was the hothead gun guy race car driver of the group, the five, the five young teens with superpowers. And he drove the race car and he shot guns and he was like, he had this really cool, he threw a bolo with a, just a feather and he just threw it at people and killed guys. It was awesome. <laughs> and I wanted to be him so bad that I took a three-quarter helmet from my dad and painted it like the, the bird helmet that they wore. And I rode my bicycle around Marine City, Michigan with this bird helmet on looking like an idiot. <laughs> but I wanted to be him so bad. <laughs> I don't actually think, I don't think I have an answer better than that, to be honest. That's so fantastic. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Uh, Imagine you with your bird helmet it's on now. Manly, I'm telling you. Super manly. Super manly. manly. Manly bird helmet. Manly bird helmet. You know what? I actually would have. I would love to reboot the uh, the the. Oh, I don't even remember the name of it. Like the Justice League, the Wonder Twins and everything. Oh, in it. the Wonder Twins. Oh, no. Yeah. Super I, friends. Zan league, and the, Jaina. The League of the League of Heroes or whatever yes, it was called. Zan and Jaina and Gleep. Super friends. The Super friends. Super friends. Yeah. Super friends. Gleep. Um, I would like to reboot that and and be. Um, I would actually probably like to be one of the Wonder Twins because I would like to say stuff like "form of a ice eagle" or whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> that'd be super fun. I want to see like with all the like movies that they're making based on. Where's the Wonder Twins movie? Come on! Come on! Come on! Ten minutes. It would be a comedy, obviously, because that's kind of, the Wonder Twins are so goofball. But yeah. Yeah. I just like to see the Looney Tunes sort of happen again. Yeah. You know what I mean. <laughs> Like for someone like that to have just all that talent and pop between voices, and I'd want to be that guy. I'd want to be the. You want to be Mel Blanc? Yeah. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. We all want to be Mel I mean, Blanc. Big, well, we, I guess we all do. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that would just be that would be amazing to have a show that's just your baby, and you have such good characters, and you're just you're so good at popping back and forth, and yeah. that would I be. I just want to stop for a second, and you know, you guys all know Looney Tunes, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. You guys all know that those characters were all voiced by one guy, right? Yeah. Does that just, did that just blow anybody's mind? <laughs> yes! We got a couple blown. That's awesome. Eh. Yeah. yeah, he always spat his carrots out, right. It was the only thing that made the noise of a carrot just right, and he had to spit it out because he, he, he couldn't eat them. <laughs> but he had wow. to chew the carrot. He had little, a bucket next to him fact, every time really he really had Bugs Bunny. <laughs> really That's true. Next. Cool, man. Okay, this is for Big Macintosh, and yes. I was wondering, did you feel like, or how did you feel when you had more than one word? 
Well, the, the very first episode I did, I had more than one word, so I was, I was sort of expecting more than one word. Um, <laughs> so I think a, a, a slightly more apt question is, how did I feel when I seemed only to get one word routinely? <laughs> uh, they, when I first came to the audition, they, you know, the first episode I did was the, the fancy mathematics one, you know, where um, Apple, Apple Buck season, Buxy. you know, buy enough more than you can chew is just what I'm afraid of, and stuff like that. So, um, and then they said, yeah, he'll probably recur. Uh, they liked the idea of coming to him for this wisdom, and then I kept coming back and only saying, yup. Um, <laughs> I was so happy to be coming back, though, that I was, that this, as I said earlier, you know, the promise of recurring character is usually not kept in my experience. So I was quite delighted to be coming back, even if it was just for Yup. I thought, okay, good, well, the character's in, you know, so one of these days I'm going to get this, this monologue. It's going to be this huge monologue. And I'm going to, you know, be able to impart all this wisdom to somebody with, you know, uh, right? And then they gave me, uh, then they gave me Hearts and Hooves Day. So, and actually, that, that script made me nervous. <laughs> because I recognize that, like, it's, you sort of get into a thing with a character where you understand that, you know, the character operates within a certain bubble, right? Like, he can say yup, he can say nope, and he can impart this um, not fancy mathematics type of wisdom. But then as soon as you have him going, shmoopy doo, you know, you sort of wonder, like, a am I still doing something that is part of this character, or is that so loud and high and strange and different that people are going to go, eh, I don't think so. So I was very nervous about that episode. I'm glad people like it, because I was scared. Cool. Thank you. Next. Two minutes? Two more. Okay, guys, we're running a little short of time, so we're going to go two more questions, and that's all we got, okay? Um. Uh, playing in similar territory to the reboot question, um, if you could voice any cartoon character from history, what would it be? Bugs Bunny. What's that? I, I don't have one. I don't have a good one. But the, uh, I, I would love to just do it because I love, uh, I love his capacity to solve problems with wordplay. I think that's brilliant. I love it. I don't have it. I don't have the voice. I think I'd go with something like Pinky in the Brain, either Pinky yeah, yeah. and or Brain. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Nah. yeah. That was just, they had such cool adventures. They had like, I just, yeah, I really like that. Nah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, what do we all do tonight? <laughs> I don't have a good brain. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was to narf. You take the brain. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> the same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. <laughs> yes. Woo. Nice. Um, Last this, but not least. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Um, today, what's your favorite show other than My Little Pony? Breaking Bad. <laughs> and Game of Thrones. Those Lannisters. <laughs> oh. Doctor Who. <laughs> True. Awesome. For, for myself, I'm actually getting back in. Netflix has got the first season of all these really great shows from Cartoon Network. Oh, yeah. On. It's like just rewatching them all. Just rewatch the whole thing. It's like we sit down to dinner every night and we watch them one right after the other. And it's awesome. Nice. Yeah. So, all of those. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so, thank you all for coming. Thank you to Snowflake for doing a wonderful job over here. And thank you to these two fine gentlemen. Give it up! Andrew Francis and Peter New. <laughs> yeah! Uh, I went with that, and they thought, yeah, okay, that sounds slight. I guess. <laughs> That's what they wanted. Slight, yeah. yeah. Um, That's cool. Andrew. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, seeing as Princess Cadence is the spiritual leader of the Crystal Empire. Great. Right? 
Correct? Everybody? The spiritual spiritual leader. leader. Everybody looks up to her. Sure. So uh, is Shining Armor like only... There she is. There she is That's right my there. baby. Yep. Ow! Do you see... That girl can take flight. Yes. Whew. Do you see Shining Armor as more of a figurehead prince or... You know, you're going to get in there with the, uh, the, get into the teeth of Saddle mm. Arabia's, you know, marketing. I think Shining Armor is gritty. I think you don't get to see a lot of that in the show. We don't. Yeah. We you know, see more Shining Armor being. Gritty good guy. He's, a, he's guy. the Han Solo. Han Solo. Han Solo. Yeah. Frozen and Carbonite. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Two big hooves sticking out. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm I, just I, in this for the money, Twiley. <laughs> <laughs> Shining armor shot first. <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> I got him already, I love it. <laughs> you got me, you cracked me. Uh, what, what Peter. Was, huh? um, earlier this summer, yes. mostly all we saw you was painted blue. Yeah, I was pretty yeah. blue. Pretty for blue. Everybody, everybody seen the, the alien abduction trailer? <laughs> yes. Tell Hi, us. people! Yeah! Yay! <laughs> well, tell us a bit about that project. How's that going? Okay, uh, I'll have to fill everybody in. In, I think, maybe around March or so, um, a, a new film startup called Cinecu, so cinema like cine, and then, uh, and then coup like a government overthrow. Um, Cinecu started up, and their big thing was, okay, make us a movie trailer, and, uh, and then we're going to have a, basically a contest, and the winner of the contest uh, is going to get a million dollars. And so 90 different groups of filmmakers from across Canada got together, and they all made trailers. Awesome. Welcome, everybody! <laughs> to once again the manliest panel you're going to see all weekend. Ain't that right? Yeah. So, thank you all for coming. I know it's like bright and early on a Sunday. Most of you people stayed up really late last night watching Pony Stock, didn't you? Wasn't that awesome? Did Mike the Microphone rock it or what? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I love you too, Mike. So, to get started here, I'm going to bring in my very good friend, Dr. Andrew Francis. Give it up! Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Mr. Francis, how are you doing today? I'm doing quite well. How are you? Awesome, awesome. You know, you know, have you seen Peter? I haven't seen Peter anywhere. Any of you guys seen Peter at all? Today? Where was he? Was he the elevator? He was by the elevator. You know, he was by the elevator. You know what? You look over there. I'm going to look over here. Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Peter! Hey! Pumpkin eater! <laughs> Peter! Uh, you passed out there. Just passed out underneath the table. Pony stock was awesome. Yeah. You you wait now, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's groggy, but man, where'd you get a pillow down there? <laughs> I got a whole setup, man. Oh. <laughs> they got me a room. I'm now you know where I'm Peter's down. been staying. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, yeah, this, is, this, has to no be, this, this has to be the manliest panel here all weekend. It has to yeah! be. And you know, you know. Um, and because uh, we all wanted a million bucks. A million. And, um, and our movie, uh, after several different votes and elimination processes, uh, our movie Alien Abduction made the top five. Bum, bum, bum. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and so in, uh, in the movie, I play the alien. Um, Patrick Gilmore, who some of you may know from Stargate Universe, 
uh, plays Dave Duberinsky. And the plot of the movie is that um, uh, I've been abducting him since he was a baby uh, because my race would like to take over the earth from humans. Uh, and if he turns out to be a person with worth by the time he's 30, we'll leave you guys alone. But he's a loser. <laughs> of course, he thinks he's getting abducted by aliens, so he abducts me. Hence, alien abduction. Um, Kaboom! Kaboom! Whoa! I get it! So he ties me to a chair with a bunch of Christmas lights and starts interrogating me and everything. Um, like any alien would. Yeah. Like you would, yeah. if you're a loser. Yeah, loser, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I was blue. I was painted blue, and I, was, I had a, a head-to-toe blue, an awesome, like, full bodysuit made for me by these awesome costume designers called Enigma Arcana. Uh, and so we're the top five. And that means that the producers and the director have to fly to Banff, Alberta, where every year there's a, a huge um, media festival where many pitches are made. Hollywood insiders are all there. It's a huge deal. They got to go to uh, Banff to pitch with the other four teams that got into the top five. They all pitched for the one million bucks. And uh, the winner was Wolf Cop. <laughs> Set in Alberta, Canada, maybe. Set, they're actually, I think they're from Saskatoon. No, Saskatoon. Sask Saskatchewan. Um, but, uh, beat out by Wolf Cop Beat out by Wolf Cop, but you know. <laughs> again! With again. Wolf, Cop, but a wolf, wolf Cop. Cop again! But you wolf know Cop! What? If you're going to make a movie for a million bucks... Make sure it's about wolves. I think you're going to make Wolf <laughs> yeah. Cop, ultimately. Because wolves Wolf and Cop cops. is... Oh, no tea. Oh. Amazing! Amazing! Wow, lemon flavor. Do you need a refill? Peter, <laughs> last year, last year, oh, thank you very much. Do we have to answer questions? I just want to play with the ponies. <laughs> hey, Pete, last year we couldn't talk about this little cool mongoose that you play we now. We could not. We, we could were not. forbidden from forbidden talking about, from forbidden. Talking about mongoose. Littlest Pet Shop. Yep. Um, tell me a bit about playing such a, a character with such a, a huge accent on him. Is he a little bit uh, tougher to play than a uh, regular I, normal character? I don't find him tough to play uh, particularly. I mean, it, it is... I mean, Big Macintosh has a little accent on him, too, for yeah. me, right? I, um, when I got Big Mac, they said, uh, okay, can you say yep? I said, yep. They said, can you say it like Ashley says it? <laughs> they went, oh, my, yep. And they went, great. Okay, good. So basically, I just make my voice low and imitate Applejack. That's, you know, I guess that's what I'm saying. That's a secret. Don't tell. Um, but I said this at the other panel, too. With, uh, with Sunil, I, I had been, uh, in 2011, in the summer of 2011, I had the chance to go to Uganda to work uh, at Mira Nair's acting school called Mesha. Uh, uh, and I, or it was a film school, not an acting school, but I was the acting mentor and I got to cast the four short films that were being made by the uh, students. And, um, uh, and I was working with other mentors from other disciplines and other places. There were writers from New York and uh, an editor from New York and a writer from LA. And, a, uh, and then there, were, uh, there was a camera guy and a sound guy, both from uh, Bombay. Mm -hmm. And they had come to to work on uh, sound and camera. And uh, the sound guy, Balon, would always come up to me and say, Peter, you have to remember the sound guy always comes last. <laughs> it's just a fact, Peter, on film sets. And then he would walk away, that was it. You know, uh, and so when they asked me to do Sunil and they wanted a slight Indian accent, I thought, well, Balon, you know, the sound guy always coming last. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know, he's a little bit of a sad sack. You know, Balon is not particularly, he's a, he's a great guy, but, you know, that, that sort of sad sack sentiment I thought was kind of perfect for Sunil, and I just kind of... Oh, what uh, we need to do to start out being manly? Yep. Yep. We need cider. Cider. <coughs> yes. You gotta put cups down like this, up. too. Yes, you must slam them like manly men. Can't be delicate. Mm -mm. No, no. Manly. Manly. <laughs> Be one careful, you, though. You can break these you, easy. And one for you. All right. Yes. We gotta get started early today. Mm. Mm. Cheers, my gentlemen. Cheers. 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 Manly cheers. Manly yeah. cheers. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, you are. But, <laughs> boy, <laughs> boy. You know, it was manlier last year, wasn't it? It was just a little bit like manlier last year. So we, yeah. got, we got to step it up. We got to step it up. Step it up. Stepping it up. Stepping Making it, it up. manly. So, 
I think your sister needs a, a, a yeah, hairbrush. Yeah, I can't yeah. <laughs> and you get. Woo! No. No. That, no, no, wait, wait, wrong, wrong pony. You don't, you don't get cheerily. You get Fluttershy. I get, I get cheerily. Can, can I open it? Yes, yes, open them. Can open I, them. can I open it brush. in a manly way? There's your brush. Okay. Yay. <laughs> You see, it, it's so much more manly. Yeah. Her tail. Mm, love you. Let's get, where's the brush? It's in there. It's in there. No. There you go, sis. How is that, Twiley? And of, and of course, once again, Princess Celestial is my question. So, let's go to my questions. Did you get did you, flowers in yours? I, I did. Got, I, got a, I, got a, I got a little tea set. Uh, <gasps> and it's shining armor and cape. Okay. I'll, oh. I have a little 